We turn to Donald Trump, a racist voodoo doll made of discarded cat hair. <laughs> and first, first, let me just say how truly sorry I am to have to talk about him again. I know I've done it a lot recently, but we're going to be off the air for a month, and there are some things I need to say. Because just this week, not only has Trump continued to struggle in the polls, his campaign director resigned, and it seems he's currently taking advice from Roger Ailes, a sexually rapacious hard-boiled egg. <laughs> and, and this feels like a fork in the road for Trump. He's either hitting bottom, from which he'll rebound to victory, or it's the beginning of the end. So, let's look at his options. Because obviously losing would be disastrous, because his entire brand is built around not doing that. I know how to win. That's all what right. I've been doing all my life is I've been winning. I don't do anything unless I win. I have a winning temperament. I know how to win. Because my whole life I've been winning. My whole life has been about winning. He's like an alien attempting to impersonate a human, but his, <laughs> but his only research was watching Charlie Sheen interviews. <laughs> and the problem is, Trump wouldn't just be losing any election. He'd be losing it to Hillary Clinton. And that wouldn't just be off-brand. It would be brand-destroying. And he knows it. Wouldn't that be embarrassing to lose to crooked Hillary Clinton? That would be terrible. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it would be humiliating to lose to a candidate whose trustworthiness is doubted by 60% of registered voters. That's nearly two thirds. Statistically, Clinton is trusted by just one of the John Mayer trio, which is <laughs> insane because, by definition, two of the John Mayer trio, to some extent, trust John Mayer. <laughs> Now, the other option is Trump resets, comes from behind, and wins. And I would argue that's even worse for him, because then he actually has to run the country. And that means living in government housing, uh, conversing with fully clothed women, and <laughs> travelling in a plane that doesn't even have his name on it. Just this week, he tried to seem more presidential by apologising uh, and distributing disaster relief, and he looked miserable. And that's pretty much all that being president is. <laughs> and that is why I'd actually like to address the rest of this segment directly to Donald Trump. And I know that you're watching, Donald, because you watch everything that's said about you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you sleep in a tanning bed made out of TVs playing cable news talking about you. That, that is an actual photo taken in an actual nightmare. It seems that you have two really bad options here. If you keep going, you're going to spend the next 11 weeks ramping up hatred in speeches, injecting poison into the American bloodstream that will take generations to remove, and denying the country the contest of ideas that a presidential campaign should actually be. And after that, you're either going to win or you're going to lose. And I think both those scenarios end pretty badly for you. Which is why, Mr. Trump, Donny, <laughs> Daniel, I, I would like to propose to you a third option, and that is drop out. Simply drop out and tell America this entire candidacy was a stunt. A satire designed to expose the flaws in the system. And the thing is, you could actually make a fairly decent case for that. Because although your campaign was the political equivalent of a bigoted clown's blazing funeral pyre, <laughs> you have accidentally made upwards of four good points during this campaign. Last year, when your opponents criticized you for donating to Democrats, you said this. Before two months ago, I was a businessman. I give to everybody. When they call, I give. And you know what? When I need something from them, two years later, three years later, I call them, they are there for me. So what and that's get? a broken system. So what You're right. Any system that requires phone calls to and from you is completely shattered. <laughs> You are like the chaplain at Disney Jail. If I'm talking to you at all, something has gone horribly wrong. <laughs> but it is...